discuss the media and politics. I'm now joined in the studio by the former Prime Minister, Paul Keating. Thanks for being here. Tony. Uh, now, Tony Abbott's fond of saying that unlike uh, the reforming hawk Keating governments, the Gillard government has no real reform credentials, that carbon pricing is not a reform at all. What do you say to that? Well, it's a huge reform, Tony, a huge reform. Look, only prices and markets shift these big things. You know, uh, people used to say to me, uh, what is the most important price in the economy? And, of course, it's the exchange rate. And when the exchange rate changes, all sorts of things happen. When we, when we started moving to a floating exchange rate, whole new industries popped up. Uh, first one was to international tourism. We never had one before. Then the international wine industry. Then a new domestic financial industry. Uh, then education services from abroad. You know, then exports of high uh, technology things. I mean, this is... The price allocates capital in the market. Only a price on carbon will start allocating capital to the right places where we should be investing in the new Australian economy. So the, the question is, I think, do we want a first-rate industrial economy or do we want an economy with a brown fat underbelly? You know, do we want to get into the new age with the new industries or do we stay in the old ones, uh, you know, t talking as Tony Abbott's talking about industries that were important 100 years ago? So, uh, put another way, I mean, do you regard carbon pricing in the same way you regard some of the great reforms, even acknowledged by Tony Abbott, of your era? I certainly do. I mean, uh, I, I think the... See, there is a view that the industries that may come out of this are things we kind of have to do. We have to clean up coal. Uh, we have to clean up water, we have to do this, we, we have to do with nitrogenous fertilisers, we've got to... as if they are a problem. People should see them as the new industries. These are the new Silicon Valley industries. Uh, this is how the Chinese see them. You know, I, I, you, know, I, you know, I'm on the board of China Development Bank, you know, which is the, the body which is basically growing the whole of the west of China. They see the new industries as their key new growth industries. Uh, we won't have them here. I mean, the idea here that we turn our back on the new country, on the new transforming Australian economy, by not letting carbon be priced and therefore capital allocated properly is, is nonsense. I mean, you know, the Abbott... I mean, the Abbott, the Abbott argument that you don't tax the polluters, you give them money... You give the polluters money to change their bad habits is, is tripe. But think about uh, what if Tony Abbott and others who oppose the carbon price are saying about the Chinese, that in fact their emissions are going to keep growing, they're not serious about green technologies, in fact they can't be because they've got to keep growing their economy. Oh, that, that's, that, if so, anyone says that, they don't know China. I mean, the Chinese, look, they've got... you know. You know, eight-lane highways into all their cities. All their cities are going to be connected by the fastest trains. They, they, they have the most modern airport terminals. They will have the cleanest water whenever they can get it. They will have sustainable industries. They're losing arable land. They're going to maintain it. They're going to remove uh, nitrogenous fertilisers. I mean, China knows that the new tertiary industries are in the green area. See, Tony... In this country, 80% of people work in the tertiary economy, in services, in the industry, like as we are tonight, in the service economy. And the new industries, the green industries, are service industries, not the old manufacturing. Manufacturing's moved to the east. It's the, new, it's the service industries the new are the new growth industries. So to turn you back on the mechanism which allocates the capital out of the old industries and into the new ones is to turn your back on your future. So, I mean, do you see these as, as traditional labour reforms? Because I mean, your reforms, yeah. you, yeah. the reforms of the hawk eating era, yeah. the big ones, enterprise bargaining, the uh, reduction of tariffs, floating of the dollar, big privatisations, prices and incomes accord, etc., etc. They're even lauded by Tony Abbott. But you're so, do you actually see this in the same I do. terms? I, and, you know, uh, look, the economy's in a massive transition. That's obvious to everybody. Uh, the terms of trade are affecting a massive transition on us. And this pricing mechanism in carbon is part of that transition. 
So, of course, it stands with those big changes, Medicare, superannuation, the deregulation, the ones you mentioned. It's, it's, it's in that league. It, it's part of the labour tradition of change, the labour tradition of the adaptation of the economy. You know, this... Look, you know, Tony, you know what Tony Abbott's policy is? If you don't give me the job, I'll wreck the place. If you don't give me the job, I'll wreck the place. And we're saying, oh, well, well, Tony, you better have it. You know, otherwise you might destroy it on us. I mean, Tony, Tony's got to have the political judo chop. That's what Tony has to have. <laughs> this policy is an all or nothing gamble for Julia Gillard, who it seems you think should be judo chopping uh, Tony Abbott. But well, well, what, can you, what can you do with obscurantism? It's, but it's, but it's, well, first of all, it's an all or nothing gamble for him as well. Yeah. Judging by the polls and the public mood, it could go either way. But certainly right now it's going his way. Well, well if a country wants to back its way... Countries make mistakes, Tony. Lots of countries have made mistakes. If a, contra, a, company want, a, a country wants to back its way down the pathway of obscurantism to keep the old, brown, dirty industries of the Industrial Revolution, post, the early post-Industrial Revolution, which is what these are, then it doesn't, it doesn't want a growth future. It doesn't want higher levels of income. It doesn't want to better allocate resources. It doesn't want to have a clean environment. It doesn't want to have clean water, uh, better, better forests, better, you know, uh, simply be part of the new age. Why is Tony Abbott's... It, 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 given what you're saying, if, if the public took that view, they wouldn't necessarily be supporting him so wholeheartedly. But his just say no campaign appears to be winning right now. Well, 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 uh, let's go. I mean, I've been through a lot of these ones myself. I fought car companies, textile companies, uh, you know, you name them when the tariffs come down. But you look at it today, look at the results, you know. Do you think that... Ford and General Motors would have been giving us the cars they're giving us today if we hadn't have had low tariffs, if we hadn't have taken the, the effective subsidy away, if we'd have just handed them some money to do better, as Tony Abbott's suggesting we do with pollution, hand them some money to do better. You still have, you know, the handles falling off, the old creaky doors, the low quality. I mean, you've got the quality in Australian cars now because of competition because the market's given you imports. You know, you can get a Mazda, you can buy a Volkswagen, so therefore the Australian cars have measured up to that. Unless you have a market mechanism working, the idea that the government can hand money out to improve these things, which is the Abbott policy, is it's just it's bunkum. But, but, by the way, what's, what's the media doing about this? What about that sleepy press gallery of ours? What are they... I mean, is there no premium on quality? Is there no premium on good public policy anymore, do they just say, oh, he said that and then she said this and they said this and we said that? Uh, you know, wh where is the quality of the national debate and why isn't Abbott being flogged by the media? Well, we'll come to the media. Position. We'll come to the media in a moment. But uh, tonight, for example, Tony Abbott was uh, taking task at a public forum in Brisbane for bagging climate scientists, for bagging economists who support the carbon tax. And he was asked... Why doesn't he listen to these experts? And, and he was asked, who do you listen to? And he said, I listen to the public. <laughs> well, it's a jingoist answer, isn't it? Jingoism, you know. Don't, don't, lead, don't conscientiously lead the community or lead the nation, just follow along behind public opinion. Well, you know, that's what... Well, he seems to be leading public opinion in this regard. I mean, <laughs> he's, say, he's saying that he listens to the public, but he's yeah. leading the public, isn't he? Mm. Well, I don't think he is, Tony. No, he's not leading the public. I think the Prime Minister is leading the public. And, uh, and, um, and she's doing a level best. Um, uh, but she's, you know, getting support in important places. But this is a very great reform. And if a country like Australia can't affect these kind of changes, where does it leave us in the big game against the Chinese, the Chinese economy, you know, all these other countries, you know, most of Europe, Sort of making these important changes in, in climate and climate science. Where does it leave us? Uh, you, of all people, know how hard it is to get a new tax uh, put in. Uh, in fact, Tony Abbott's stolen one of your best lines on opposing the carbon tax. He's stolen your 
own campaign line against John Hewson's new tax, the GST. If you don't understand it, don't vote for it. If you do understand it, you'd never vote for it. I mean, yeah. he's using your best lines. Yeah, well, that's Oscar Wilde said, anyone that doesn't like flattery has never been flattered. <laughs> <laughs> but, but doesn't this just go to prove how hard it is to actually introduce a new look, tax look, in this country? Look, 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 Tony, let's be clear about it. It's $30 billion in all coming from the polluters. It's not the public paying the tax, it's the companies. Of the 30 bill, 15 goes to the public, roughly, and 15 goes to new, new clean technology, right? Just as it ought to be. Just as it ought to be. It's not as if it's a tax on members of the public. It's a tax on the companies and the extent that leads to increases in prices, they're covered by the compensations the government are offering them. So, I mean, it's a very, very well thought out scheme and, a, and and importantly, a very fair one. But surely uh, some of this has got to do with the, the way the government has sold this policy right from the beginning. Months and months of ministers, the Prime Minister and uh, everyone who wanted to support this scheme having no detail to work with. Surely that was a political disaster, wasn't it? Well, it's very hard to get this stuff out and going when people know you're doing it and yet you haven't got the detail out. Now it's out there. See, for instance, you know, the Treasurer has increased the tax-free threshold to $18,000. That's a very big change, very big change. Half a million people uh, will have a substantial benefit out of that, mostly women, mostly, mostly part-timers, women. Um, and, of course, an increase in the tax-free threshold to 18000 goes to everybody. It goes to you and it goes to me. So everyone has a win from it. This is a very big tax change, very big change. So until people see the detail... It is hard to sell the stuff, but once it's out there, I mean, this policy change and the neatness of the compensations and, if you like, the justice of the measure should really be applauded across the media. You know, if it, if it, if it gets this bad, that it's that hard to get a, a, a plus for something this right, what hope does the country have? Let's talk